<laughs> Hello, beautiful souls. Hi. <laughs> when your sister says something funny and you interrupt it with recording in progress. <laughs> Full stop. Um, what were you saying? Is it for me or no? It's for you. It's okay. Later. Okay. Okay. You can text me. Wink, wink. <laughs> All right. This is going to be episode six of the Order of Blue Rose, the five virtues that we've been covering. So, so far we have covered truth, peace, and harmony. Today we cover Aurelia's specialty, love. One of her many titles in the divine realms and the galactic realms is what is it what's the official queen of divine love and peace yes queen of divine love and peace and she brings it all the time she's a good moderator whenever i'm too spicy and <laughs> getting out of control <laughs> She goes, I hear you, but <laughs> please consider this. <laughs> Have you thought about blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm better. Would you say I'm better for the audience? Yes. She's not being paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it comes through. Yeah, I've grown a lot. So the frequency of love is 528 hertz. It really doesn't matter the the tune if you like it and it's 528 hertz. It's literally connecting that frequency with your heart chakra and it is activating love frequency without with your being. And so you can play that like this is so up my alley. If you have a disgruntled family member and... They don't really like all this mumbo jumbo new age stuff, which is not new age. We're going back to the way it was eons ago, actually. You too can play for them some love frequency, high hertz music, and they may just love the tune and not realizing that you're helping to heal their heart. So, I mean, that's a really non-confrontational way to, to deliver healing to an energy body. And I happen to love the idea. Love it, love it. Uh, love per the internet definition, an intense feeling of deep affection, a great interest and pleasure in something, a like or something you enjoy very much. And that all sounds a little impersonal to me. Does it sound like a loving um, frequency vibration to just say a great interest or pleasure in something? <laughs> I think with the word love, it's become overused. Yeah. Yeah. It's, wa it's watered thing. down like a, like a carnival cruise mixed drink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> If you've been on a carnival cruise, you'll know what I'm talking about. I have not, but I've heard about them. <laughs> like a casino floor mixed drink. Ah, uh, yes. Um, it's token amount. Yeah, and I, people do, they, they use love in place of other words that are actually more appropriate for what they're doing. They just want to sprinkle love on everything but it's it's takes the power of it away and if it's not coming from an authentic place what are you actually delivering because every word has a frequency attached to it every feeling has a frequency attached to it that's why words have power so if you're using the word love but your action your energy is less than love that's actually what's being delivered it doesn't matter what you call it so there's a, there's a lot of misinterpretation and misuse, in my opinion, of, of love, but it's also brought a lot of healing and transformative power to the collective. You have something? You look like you want to say something. No, I'm good. Okay. Continue. Okay. Our heart chakra 
right here in the middle of your chest really surrounds your actual physical heart, but it's from side to side is capable of so much more than giving and receiving love, which I will say for many of us, myself included, navigating the life that we soul contracted for me caused me to wall up my heart. I was not receiving love and I was sending love, but in a very superficial way, because that was safer. I wasn't going to get my feelings hurt. And the Sophia dragon tribe came in and really healed me of, of that, of breaking down the walls, showing me that it's okay to be vulnerable, to feel love, and then just really poured it on. And that love truly did heal me. So if you're in that predicament, I empathize with you. You can definitely come visit us at violetlotusenergy.com and we can get your energy cleared and you too can break down those walls around your heart chakra and really start to live life by receiving love. It's connected to a greater network of heart-centered beings that resonate with the highest frequencies. As one learns to open their heart to the universe, their heart can then receive loving transmissions and loving guidance from the universe. So if you are one of those that's sitting around going, when am I going to have my first contact? I've been asking for an alien to land in my backyard. <laughs> I don't know what you wish for. <laughs> but, you just get it. <laughs> but what you're actually sending out there is it's not genuine or it's misguided or it's for whatever reason, it's not authentic, then you're not going to actually be receiving that message because you're not actually sending that message. So you have to be in alignment. So your thoughts, your feelings, your actions all need to align to the frequency that you are sending. And that's the frequency that you'll get back. This allows one to work with group consciousness. And it's another thing too, like you've heard of ley lines. When I do a QET session, I make sure to disconnect us all, the beings that I work on, from negative timelines and negative grids, and then connect them to positive grids. So if you're in a twin flame union, I'm going to connect you to the divine love grid. Then love that flows along that grid, you're susceptible to pick up and it will help you connect to your twin flame. There's all sorts of different grids people can be connected onto, but there's some are negative and some are positive. So I make sure to flip everybody over to the positive grids because you want as much positive connectivity around our planet as possible. Humanity in a loving way can be influenced through the collective by allowing the lower frequencies of the collective to be overwhelming. So if one person is, is like the love center of a family and everybody around them is just naysayers and they're full of negativity and they're, and they're full of low vibrational things, that one being has to do so much work to elevate all those uh, lower vibrations around them. They can, and it's possible to do that without ever uttering a word, but it does take a toll on that higher vibrating energy body. So they have to do a lot more energy maintenance. They have to do a lot more to keep their frequency up because it's a, it's a soul suck. It's an energy suck to be around people that are constantly um, vibrating less than love. So I'm going to give it to you now, Miss Queen of Love to <laughs> add on to a little bit of that. So love is pervasive it's not always pretty. It's not all of the warm and fuzzies and butterflies and everything that way. It can be, mm -hmm. you know, that is a part of it, but it's, it encompasses so much more and so much more depth. It is the key. That's something we've been told for months and months and months. Love is the key. Love is the key. Love right. is the key. When you're thinking, oh, how do I handle this situation? Or what about this? Or what about that? This doesn't make sense. Hmm. Love is the key. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? What do you mean love is the key? Well, what encompasses everything and with that vibration, that frequency, it's like it it's the building block almost. You know, that very base, you've got to have that sound base before you put something else on top of it. And with the opportunity to provide love and create love and send love, you're encouraging and building that layer. 
that foundation. Yes. And from there, everything else can build upon it. Right. You're a little bit soft in your voice. So next I time. Speak louder. How's that? Spread that love chakra. <laughs> Choosing to work with groups energies is a leap on the spiritual path. I know that for me, I tend to shy away from like group meditations and those kind of group activities because I don't, I'm not a fan of engaging in a lot of other energies that I'm not um, able to check. So anybody can join. And that literally means anybody can join. I don't want to really engage with people that are not maintaining their energy. They may have a lot of entities. They may have a lot of implants and different things like that, that darkness can travel. So I don't tend to do that unless I'm in a group like ours, where everybody's really making it a priority to keep their energy clear. But that being said, it goes along with what Aurelia was just talking about. We were guided last year to really focus on love. We had been through this uh, very much of a battle mode mentality, having to respond to different types of missions and attacks. And we were being asked to, uh, to tap into that love frequency. And I remember thinking, okay, <laughs> what's that gonna do? But that was also before I had my own <laughs> healing from Sophia Dragon Tribe. And through my doubts, because I was not 100% sold, I still followed through with the guidance. And as a group, we used love and we started to do love waves that we sent out to the collective. We had intention sometimes to direct it at certain things. And sometimes it was just pure love, send it out, let it go where it needs to go. And then we started to get feedback. And we started to get positive feedback from beings, emissaries, planets, star systems that we had never even heard of before. Thank you us for sending out our beautiful rainbow love waves because it's helping them days and weeks after we sent it out. And that was an aha moment for me. Do you, do you remember how you felt when those messages started to come back in? Oh my gosh, yes. It was one of those... I, it felt good doing it, but wonderful sending love and such a high vibration and such sincerity. Then to have, to know that the ripples were there, it really, really, it was so positive to receive yeah. that feedback and to know, yes, you're helping someone. I'm here. I am sitting here just doing my thing and it's causing those profound effects elsewhere. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's not that we do it because we have a guarantee of the effect that it's going to have. We literally do it not knowing the effect that it's going to have, but our intentions are benevolent and our intentions are good. Then to have these beings feel so compelled, so grateful to contact us and go through the steps to contact us because it's a little difficult. You got to get permission from Mother Sophia. You got to get sniffed up and down by and unicorns and some dragons you don't just and, the phone and our security team before they can even contact us and they go through that just so they can say thank you so much we are so grateful for the love that you sent to us and it's making these things that we've always wanted possible now or these lower vibrational beings became so uncomfortable they left and now our our space our community, our planet or whatever is safer. It's happier. It's brighter. It's lighter. We're getting all this feedback and um, it's just good to hear. I don't care who you are. You really do like a return on your investment, right? We're given the investment, sending it out, understanding that we want, we want to send it in the most positive, highest vibration, but then to get a little bit of a return on that and know that it's really super helpful to people. It's very, very important. And, uh, and so it became a daily thing for us. And we follow the guidance. Sometimes we get messages in, um, you know, the energies are really wreaking havoc on the planet, on the collective. So let's boost the love waves to twice a day. Sometimes in, in really, really tumultuous times, we do it three times a day and it feels good all the time. One love wave doesn't take away from the feeling, the energy of the next love wave. They're all really, really unique in how it feels and transmitting that love. 
And what we hear too is it's not just a one and done. Those waves continue and they cause more ripples and they continue and they continue. So you've done one, well, a little bit later or another day, provide another love wave and just maintain that frequency more and more throughout. Yeah. Sending it, like you said, wherever it needs to go. And sometimes we just wing it wherever yeah. we feel it needs to go. Right. Because it's energy and energy can't be destroyed. And so that energy continues to flow. Now the ripples, the size of the ripples may get a little bit smaller or fade away. Eventually that energy is still there. And so we follow that up with, with more bigger ripples to push everything um, through. And I know when I do my own, um, you know, I'm, I'm envisioning where I'm sending it, but then I also wrap it up with as far up and as far down and around as it can go. And so there's these in my, my mind, I'm envisioning these rainbow, beautiful rainbows spiraling around people, just making them feel hugged and loved. And they may not even know what assisted them in feeling better in that moment, but it was love. Love has the power to transform, transmute and change any situation. And we have learned that, um, sometimes kicking and screaming, but we've learned it. <laughs> no one said the lessons were simple and easy actually no. they're simple they're not always easy yeah most of the time it's we got to get out of our own way we got to get out of the way of what we think we know and then make space to learn and accept things new and different and it's not that it's groundbreaking information it's just new and different from what we've been taught what where it's been ingrained in us and then we go because of the overuse of the word love I think that's where in the beginning I was like okay <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna do but okay and I just then knew it's not going to hurt anything it's only yeah going to help. yeah and it did and then it helped so much more and it became the key that unlocked so many beautiful doors to so many things that I could not even fathom and that was the universe saying see Andalusia love is very powerful don't forget about love and it has such the vibration that it opens you into being receptive you're no longer in upon yourself and you're no longer saying I'm going to tackle and take down the jungle and I will succeed with all of this in my might you're yeah. allowing it to happen and getting into more of the flow because you're, you're, you've raised yourself, your vibration yeah. to, to share with others. Yeah. I think that a lot of people feel the most nudge to force things when they're really dipping into those low vibrational um, emotions and feelings of fear of shame, blame, guilt, um, and so they want to force things to be better. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to, I'm going to correct this no matter what other people think. And that's not how it works. The more you try to force something, the more elusive it will become for you. And we had to learn that lesson too, didn't we? <laughs> when you get more opportunities to try to force things too. Like, yeah. Okay, you want to do this? Here you go. Oh, yeah. you wanted more practice. Got it. Exactly. <laughs> the heart, however, either feels something resonate within it or it doesn't. Whether or not there is a logical explanation for it, the mind can be seduced by those who tell you they have great spiritual power. This will instantly trigger an intuitive warning bell in your heart for those with genuine power do not need to convince you of it. Mm. The heart is the key to deciding where you offer your devotion. Once we work to open our heart, allowing and accepting love to flow through, we unlock a very powerful transformative energy. Love is used to heal. Love is used to lead. And love opens doors to opportunities for soul growth and expansion in an infinite number of ways, which is why love is the key. Love is the key to forgiveness. Love is the key to healing from trauma and heartache it takes loving yourself enough to walk down the path and revisit the original source of the pain the first cut cuts deepest allowing that love to hold you while you resist 
the original wound feeling pain again, and then you push through, you lean into it and it helps you to heal fully and completely. Healing requires feeling. If you are doing shadow work and you are stopping short, you're stopping prematurely before you truly feel the feelings associated with that original wound, that original trigger, you are uh, doing yourself a disservice. And you really do have to go down to that deeper layer, right, Leah? There are layers upon layers of healing that we have to do. And it is not just the surface that you have to clean off. You have to really get down and take it apart and put it back together in love. It's that whole onion with a layer upon layer upon layer. And sometimes the layers don't always, well, often they don't always show themselves not all of the layers at one time because you're not always ready to heal them. So you know there's that onion or two or three or 10 and you're ready to heal these three layers. Great. Yeah. And then you can live in that level of healing. And then more layers come up when you're ready to heal them. If there's a protective measure that comes in there and I don't think it's ego. I truly think it's <clears throat> ourselves protecting our, excuse me, our teams protecting us so that we know we can handle it. I mean, if you go through 30 years of everything in a week, that's gonna be a lot. But when you say, okay, I'll take this here, I'll take this there, and you give yourself the time, you give yourself the opportunity to go through the process of healing. And a lot of times it looks like grief, yeah. but that's okay. You're yeah. healing yourself, you're healing the situations. Then it provides you the opportunity for further growth self-love, self-care, and love of others. Yes. I've seen it play out that way for many where um, I'm not sure what happened. Sorry, I lost you for a minute there. I just cleared my throat. The, the video went off for a minute. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, there's been plenty of times where people have reached out for some assistance where they, they, they interpret that they're hitting a wall in their shadow work, but what's really happening is that they're recoiling from actually going deeper in to feeling it. Cause they really don't want to hurt again. And like the old ER nurse in me wants to go, it's just a little bit of pain. It's not going to kill you. I know it sucks, but like, I'm a realist. It's just a little bit of pain. You're going to cry. You're going to, you, you, you might want to throw up. I don't know, but do you want this to keep following you around the rest of your life? Or do you want to just deal with it? You know, it's like taking medicine. It tastes like medicine. It's not supposed to taste good. Um, so there's, there's a level of, um, acceptance in the shadow work and it's not a checklist. So again, you may visit those first few layers and really start to come to terms with that and then give yourself grace to be there. Don't be too quick to go, okay, what's next on the list? Um, because lists are really, they're going to set you up for failure and you, you are artificially creating pressure to process things on a schedule instead of just allowing them to process with the energy and the flow of that. And then when your spirit team and when your universe that your, your vortex is going, okay, now they're ready. That next revelation of layer will come up and you, you may go, oh, well, you know, I did that shadow work six months ago. Why am I having to do it again? Well, because <laughs> You got to get a little bit deeper and it's taking you from that time to this time to be ready to dive into that. And that's why I, I try to emphasize for people that shadow work is con it's a continual process. It's a journey. And we've known a person or two that is, you know, like, well, can I just do all my shadow work? Can I, can't they just dump it all in my lap? Well, yeah, <laughs> you're going to regret that. <laughs> ties back into be careful what you ask for. Um, but by and large, that doesn't happen. It's more often that beings are more apprehensive about really truly engaging with their shadow work 
they feel a little bit of that feeling of that original wound and they recoil and then they kind of, that's where they need the support. That's where they need the support of the group to go. We know we've, we've been there. We feel it. We hold you. We love you. We nurture you. I know that compassion is needed. Give yourself compassion. Give yourself some time in the sun. Just let it be for a minute. And then they find the strength to continue to move forward. Because I think without that support, it's real easy to turn around and go back the other way. There's a little bit of accountability. Yeah. It may not have been comfortable, but it was recognizable. And it's kind of where you felt yourself, where you knew where you were. Yeah, exactly. So love is one of the five virtues because when you are walking the path of ascension to a higher dimension, when you're leaving duality behind, there's no more us versus them. There's no more um, negative polarity and positive polarity. It's just unified consciousness, which is Christ consciousness, which is the return of Christ, which is all love. So you cannot be there and fall short on the virtue of love. It has to be an integral component of who and what you are and how you make your decisions when you navigate your path. So learning that is what we're doing in the lower dimensions, in the lower timeline and learning how to elevate out of that through love, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, kindness, empathy. Those are the things that help it become easier to walk that path because you do the work. It's, it's not easy to go, okay, I'm just going to love everybody and I'm going to be super honest and I'm going to find my harmony along the way. And I'm just going to keep throwing all that stuff in my bag and I'm headed to the fifth dimension. That is not how it works. (laughs) Oh, if only. (laughs) If only you could just pack a bag with your virtues. (laughs) Exactly. I pick this, this, this. Bye-bye. Yeah. I'm ready. Pick me up on the train. Yeah. Yeah. It, It takes the work to actually put that that level of comfort in all those virtues within your being and you don't need luggage you're you're trying to get rid of the luggage you're trying to get rid of your baggage <laughs> and just carry forward what's in your being and love is a foundation as we've talked about with the other videos with the rose the petals they all intersect they intertwine they support each other can you have one without the other absolutely is it all better when it's together 100 percent. yes yes even if you fall short on one of those virtues it is that you progress in in making them a part of the fabric of your life so in any given moment you may need more harmony and more love than you need truth or peace but it's not that you don't need them all together you need them all together you're just leaning more on one than you do the other and i really see them as like um bouncer uh bumper pads they kind of keep you in line you know you're gonna lean on love a lot because it feels better than maybe leaning on truth truth can be uncomfortable but you need both in order to really navigate that path and be authentic there's, there's, there's a huge hurdle that we put in front of ourselves because we don't want to hurt others feelings. And some of this is a part of your growth where you have to be honest. You're going to hurt your own feelings when you do the work properly, because otherwise you're hiding behind that facade of don't hurt my feelings that means you're not getting real that means you're not feeling enough to heal and so you really have to pull yourself up be um, committed to the work that needs to be done and understand that it, it might hurt for five minutes it might hurt for 30 minutes but it's not going to hurt forever and the more that you can process it using love forgiveness and gratitude the more you will advance and expand in what you're able to process. And so that's like the payoff of that journey. You have a little bit of a hard moment and then you you get healed by the universe. You get 
flood it with true, pure love and gratitude for investing in yourself, loving yourself enough to heal. That's where the payoff comes in. You want to close out anything? Last that, love comments? You just summed it up. Self-love. That's where to start. And how much that involves forgiveness of self and forgiveness of others in the situation and giving yourself grace to not feel so warm and fuzzy about it all. And that's okay. Not everything, not everything that caused us to grow was warm and fuzzy. And love is truly that, that key. If there's nothing else you can do, like when we had, when the, the weather went through and the hurricanes, well, I couldn't pick up, put on my boots and go and help somebody on the ground, but I could genuinely send love. I can help that way. And knowing that you don't, knowing that energetically there's so much more available, I think as part of a freedom and working through love letting yourself heal, working through the traumas, the lessons, all of the things you've already talked about is the key to truly freeing yourself, uplifting yourself, growing, and also showing how much you care for yourself and others, making yeah. yourself the priority. So I'm very grateful to learn more and more about these virtues. Yeah. Whenever we try to talk to people about doing shadow work using LFG, which is love, forgiveness, and gratitude. There are times where they really struggle in giving themselves permission. It's such a foreign concept for them to love themselves. They spend all of their energy loving everyone else, showing up for everyone else and everything else. And they don't even know how to begin to show love or compassion or empathy to themselves. And it, when they start, it feels very uncomfortable. It feels very foreign because they don't do it. They don't practice it. They don't engage with that. And so there's oftentimes a lot of work that we need to get done just for the person to accept that it's okay to give themselves compassion and enough time to, to start to heal, to give themselves love. And it's a sad reality of so many beings in our culture right now, because that's what we have been taught that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to just give it away to everyone else and think about yourself last. And anytime that your body starts to tell you that this isn't working for you, then you're told to ignore that and keep working. <laughs> and um, you really have to love yourself enough to take a stand and get off that negative loop of information and realize it's not working for you. It's not working out well for you or really anyone else. And to really start to do the work that matters in your, in your being, in the core of you. And I think that is a, a, a very big push for those five virtues, because no matter what we're dealing with, those virtues can help lift us up and out of it. Absolutely. You I don't know where to start. Again. Yeah. You don't know where to start. You can start with love. It will always open a door that brings you options. Then you have free will choice to do what you want to do. And is that going to be what's best for you? I don't know, but I'm sure you'll figure that out sooner rather than later. It's all a journey. Progress, not perfection. Forward it motion. is. Progress, not perfection. I love that. All righty. We're going to wrap this up. We have one more virtue to cover. And it is valor. And that'll be in a couple of days. And we're going to enjoy this moment for, for a bit. Um, <laughs> if you have not seen it, we have a new um, weekly video that we're going to do called What's Up Wednesdays with Leah and Lucy. And we just chat. We, whatever's happening, whatever's going on, that's going to be what we discuss. And it can be a range of all sorts of things. <laughs> so please check out the first one it was lots of fun it dropped yeah. this morning um the next one's not going to come in so early so people are awake and they can comment and do some things and uh and please make comments please engage with us and let us know what you like what you don't like and where you're at in your ascension journey and if they have any topic suggestions never know yeah. what we'll talk about yeah i'm happy to i need that <laughs> have a great day everyone and i'll see you again next time bye bye